and the face of Sapienza is red. Yeah, yeah. He's the mother with the red head, and here are the philosophers and sucking the breast. And uh, pictures are very important in alchemy. And uh, this shows also what we are asking people who are analyzing with us to paint the dreams. Because the visualization is so important. It, uh, uh, this was always a problem when I told the people, uh, paint your dream, then they say, oh, I can't paint. Uh, this is no excuse. Paint it as good as you can. And the painting will be still uh, different from your dream. I don't think that any, even good uh, painters, could paint exactly how the dream was. but by doing it and trying to visualize it, it becomes more clear. It becomes in a different way and it will be f perhaps different from what you dreamt, but it is an amplification of what you dreamt. It's important to understand the dream. On your desk, there is a dream from last night. I yeah. will not ask you about yeah, that yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. You but can what ask. is the tema? What is the theme of your dreams recently? The, the dreams are... Uh, the theme is... There is another... Uh, step which I have to... And in the dream, uh, I was... Uh, having another task and I was uh, saying but I don't know what I have to do uh, so this is typical for the dream because this is exactly what is a development uh, I have to face the unknown if I would say oh yeah I know then it would be nothing new. In the dreams which I told you yesterday in the lecture, there is, I was having the task to give a lecture about alchemy and the alchemical texts are the Bible. The Bible? Uh, I remember when I told the von Franz this, she said, yeah, uh, th this is a very heavy text. Not the Bible like the, uh, uh, the alchemical texts of the Bible. And the, uh, the, the, I was not prepared in the dream and I didn't know what. I could teach in a lecture about alchemy when I don't know the alchemy. So the dream told me, you have to learn, you have to study all the, your books about alchemy to be able to teach about alchemy. You have to know the t alchemical text. And this is always when a new face is coming in life. You don't know, you have to do, uh, do something which you never have done. You have to know something which you never have known. And this is how the development goes. Um, what I think is essential is Learning something is quite different. What we learned in school, this is 
in a textbook, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, and it's building up, and you can learn it with your head. But individuation is not a learning process. And individuation is always to be faced with something new which you never knew. This goes along with something that I recently read from Gigerich that the majority of the people have opinions, but very few people think. Mm -hmm. Perhaps this is also in line with the concept of individuation. To individuate you have to leave the collective and start an inner path, an inner voyage that will bring you to understand and to know yourself, to get in contact with yourself as you've been doing all your life. And your dreams are the proof of this, mm -hmm. the testimony of this. And, and there is the difference, because I, the longer I live, I have more experience of life. Yes, but this is not individuation. I have experience. One does this better in this way, because I failed several times doing it in the other way, and I learned, I learned doing it in this way. But individuation is not learning, it's growing. Like a tree, and therefore the tree is a symbol of individuation. Like the tree, the tree also cannot say, now I'm making the roots. And you can't see anything up. Uh, and now I'm making a branch and making this branch. No, everything comes organically as a whole up from the earth with the roots down, with the sprouts up. And this is how individuation, how growing happens. And therefore, also what I said with the dream spiral, the totality of the personality has to be growing. And uh, therefore, I cannot just deal with my mother complex and say, now, this chapter is finished. Now, the father complex is coming. Because sometimes <coughs> the students say, oh, Jung said, um, Dealing with the shadow is the first uh, part, part of, and uh, dealing with the unknown is the masterpiece. And then they think, now I'm already half through the anima, uh, and but the shadow I know. No, no, it doesn't go this way. It goes in the spiral, because every inside has to stand on what has already grown in you and is growing further. So it's not one chapter after the other, it is all at once. Talking about the shadow and to conclude our conversation, last night I was walking back home where I was staying here in Erlenbach and I felt somebody was following me. I turned around and there was my shadow there. Uh -huh. And I started to laugh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Really. And uh, uh, the Jung says the shadow is the, the follower. He brings a Greek expression, the follower which is always there. And as children, we did sometimes a play when it was sunny. We stood on the shadow of the other. And this was very disagreeable. Uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. The other standing on my shadow. He is not hurting me. He's standing on my shadow. Why do I feel so embarrassed and uncomfortable? Because it is something.
the shadow is something is not the absence of light my last question for you is what do you think is your contribution your original contribution to analytical psychology even perhaps to complex psychology as Jung would have preferred to call it oh I never thought about this because I had just to write my books and uh, I, you know this is a, an interesting thing as long as I thought I want to write a book then I be, will become famous I couldn't write only when I said I have the task to write and I'm a creative person and so I will write what is the meaning of the writing I don't know whether people would like and read it I don't know and so I did and only then it happened from then on I could write my whole 30 or 14 books and so this shows also that the unconscious the self doesn't want to become famous with books publishing books but to bring a message to mankind and this I did I have uh, this was a big surprise some years ago uh, a lady from Munich applied to come into analysis and she had read every book from Jung every from Pom France and every from me because she was married to a man who introduced her into Union psychology he was not a psychologist he was a person but he saw Jung is a very important person and he told her read read Jung and because he was really an individuated person of his own he was interested in the world war and so he had a very hard life and by suffering himself the wounded healer is constellated and so he instigated it uh, he has died some years ago and now she's a widow and therefore she came to analyze with me and this was very nice to see ah oh, there are some people who really are not just smelling this or that from the book but really going into the depths of the books and they mean something to her she liked it thank you very much dr ribby it's been a pleasure to meet you here this is nice thank you thank you uh, it's uh, a pleasure for me to tell from my life and uh, perhaps it helps some people to understand what human psychology really means is about because uh, on Friday I met a colleague and he said yeah the unions uh, uh, they have this uh, eternal long analysis and this is just because uh, they get rich from the patients who come for a long time and never ending analysis and, and analysis yeah and then I told him perhaps you are wrong because he gives uh, medications and so on and then he thinks this is okay but he was a bit open and said yeah yeah perhaps it's not always because they want to become rich and get more money because it's perhaps nevertheless important and so 
this is what people often say. Yeah, Jung in analysis is always long, long, hundreds of uh, hours of analysis, and this is uh, costing a, a lot of money. And I said, no, Jung himself said once that he uh, made a statistic. One third was people who are uh, receiving a, a recommendation about they are embarrassed in the situation and they need somebody telling him what to do. This is one third. Another third is a shorter analysis of perhaps 20 hours for overcoming a problem. For instance, somebody who wants to marry and is not sure is this the right man or the right woman and I have to know and, and so on. So this is a short analysis and only a few analysis is longer. And then I could supply him because in my experience I often thought, ah, oh, the new uh, analyst and uh, this is an easy question and in a few hours it will be settled. And it then became a long, long analysis because the question was already settled, but he realized that it is good for him, for his life, to continue and become more individuated. And others who came and then I thought, oh, this will be a lifelong analysis. We were finished in 10 hours or so. Because then the problem was solved and they were okay, went and continued their own life. So uh, often I was wrong. One never can say this will be so also. Because those who make a long analysis, they realize it's important <coughs> for meaning, uh, for leading a meaningful life. And others are coming just for one problem. And when it is solved, they are going on in their own way. And we will not force anybody. You have to analyze all your problems. No, we have to be careful, uh, to be aware that we will never analyze all our problems. No one can say, I solved all my problems. Because life is uh, showing always new problems. And so we will never be finished. But those who make a longer analysis, see, then their life becomes meaningful. And this is essential to lead a meaningful life and not just solve the problems which show. Mater sapienza, which yeah. makes a long life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome.